On Aspire. I'm Abha. I'm Vikram, and we're coming to you from Hard Rock Cafe in Mumbai with another action packed edition of the show. Here's what we've lined up a review of the new Tag Heuer Racer. All the tech buzz of the week, and believe us, a lot has happened. Get your stuff customized and hand painted to make it your own. And on the spotlight this week, we check out the original Indian rock star. But before we get down to that, here's all the buzz in the luxury space this week. For lovers of leather, here's another reason to splurge as Italian leather goods brand Furla enters India. Its first store opened recently at Palladium High Street, Phoenix in Mumbai. The renowned brand currently distributes to 63 countries. Gucci has collaborated with London's Victoria and Albert Museum to hold a retrospective on legendary artist David Bowie's career. The exhibition will be held from March to June 2013 and items like handwritten lyrics, original costumes, photos, films, music videos and set designs will be on display. Now, if you're a true fan of James Bond, this piece of news is sure to excite you. Bond's memorabilia will be auctioned online at Christie's to mark the 50th anniversary of this iconic character. From Bond's sports car to his wrist watches, around 40 lots will be offered from the 23 James Bond movies. So Vikram, when you were in college, were you ever inspired by rock stars? Well, in fact, uh, over the weekend I was actually thinking about it because I dreamt of having a band. 80s and 90s was that period when you were thinking of setting up a rock band and when you actually got down to thinking about it and started thinking about rock stars, the Indian scene hasn't had too many of them. Well, you know, we did have a few and they seemed to go a different route. They performed gigs, they cut albums, they didn't go about playing for films. So when we talk about the original Indian yeah. rock star, who is it that we are talking about? Here's a look. It's the big dream to entertain, to perform before a live audience in a stadium that's back to the gills. It's the dream to be a rock star. Not just a musician who plays rock, but a musician who quite simply rocks. Think rock star and you're thinking attitude, clamoring fans and fame. In the case of an Elvis, he never left America. He became, you know, it was very difficult for him to go out in public. Similarly with Michael Jackson. Everything that he did became, you know, oh, he's crazy, he's, he's wacko, he's this, he's that, he's that. It stops you from being a normal human being. Well, if that's the image of the rock star, then ask yourself if he has an Indian face. For a country that loves its music, you don't find many musicians flashing the largely Western bad boy image. Rock star is, is, has a lot of connotations because it's, it's a term from the West purely. Um, you know, there's a rock star image and there's a style, a lifestyle that has everything that goes with it. It's not just about the music or fame. So, most of the bands I've worked with in India are very nice people. <laughs> They're really normal and uh, they love making good music. And uh, that's where it ends for them. Nobody carries the attitude off stage where Mr. Baat Makroya, Raat Kobi Shades Man Ki Gomu Gaya Se Hain Hi Log, which is quite nice actually. So. Among the nice lot of Indian musicians we've seen, with a reasonable following, is this man, Lucky Ali. Not prolific, largely reclusive. Well, I have um, um, a keen interest in agriculture, not necessarily the this thing, um, the regular format or whatever, uh, but finding ways and means to uh, uh, grow more produce in less space, and you know. Uh, 
people always live the way that they want to. Where choosing music that isn't filmy is still not a run-of-the-mill career, it's still eclectic, a word that best describes Indian Ocean as a band. A lot of people want to do different things in life and not just uh, you know study and become um, and t pick up a regular job. And uh, everybody wants to be a little different, uh, apart from being cool. So this seems to be coolly one different. Coolly different. So the reason a lot of young people are attracted towards rock music and playing in a band is, you know, very straightforward that it looks glamorous. They think uh, a lot of girls will get attracted, a lot of the boys think that. And they have been watching bands and they think it looks like a very nice thing, a very cool thing to do. So it's aspirational for that reason. Musicians need to get into that frame of mind of creating a larger than life, you know, image of themselves. And not just, you know, okay, yaar, chalo, yaar, ja ke, teen char gaane baja ke aate hain. We are this cool band, we'll wear jeans and t-shirt, we'll play three chord songs and then we'll go back home and we'll go back and after a few years we'll go do an MBA degree and get a good job in the United States. So we'll never have rock stars because we don't, that's not what we want to be. Not sure if we'd say never, in the late 70s we had singers like Remo Fernandez. In the 80s there was Ranjit Barod and Uday Benegal as part of the band Rock Machine that later became Industry. And by the 90s, Indian Ocean and Euphoria had their appeal. Some released video albums, but by and large, they earned through live performances, garnering an average of 2.5 to 3.5 lakh rupees a concert. What popular media did was challenge live musicians to be more visually exciting and not just stand on stage like four hippies and play a song. Before television, it was fine just to go up on stage and play your song and look stoned out and, and uh, people liked that. But then people started expecting more from you. And I think a lot of bands couldn't make that transition. And if, you know, that, that, was the, that was the death of rock pretty much in India. Media that actually supported non-film music, uh, two channels essentially, Channel V and MTV, that gave a platform to Indian pop music. Indian rock and pop music and juxtaposed it with international pop music. It gave it that platform. But when those two channels withdrew that support, no other channel, whether radio or television, has actually supported non-film music like that. The reason for them withdrawing support was simple, because they were bleeding. They needed better uh, revenues coming in through advertising, etc. The reach of which comes only with film music. And yet there were a few sparks. In 1995, Alicia Chennai's album Made in India sold around 25 lakh copies in a year. Industry's album Pretty Child, that released around the same time, managed only 12,000 copies. Clearly the numbers were small and music companies were reluctant to sign on bands and artists. There were attempts being made to sign rock music, but at that time, you know, India was in such a place where the consumer was not going out and spending money buying albums of Indian artists singing rock music. You know, it takes the same kind of cost to record an album and to promote an album well, the music video for example, you know, you want to make a good looking music video with good production values etc. It's going to cost you the same, whatever the language. India is a very complex country. It's not, it's not as easy as saying, like the United States. I mean, the United States is its own consumer. You know, when a band releases a CD, um, you're looking to sell 10, 15 million records in your own country. The rest of the world is a bonus, you know? What I'm trying to say is that, that those countries come under a unified language and culture, whereas India, doesn't come under a unified language and culture. You, India is fragmented into many small countries, actually. There was only Doordarshan, there was no radio at all, there was no FM. And we pretty much went word of mouth from college to college. People spoke about us and we got popular that way. 
Then came Satellite TV. Satellite TV opened things up. Music television came in in a big way. And that was great because there was now this great national platform for people to listen to this kind of music. It wasn't for everyone in the country. I like to live in a world where I have more options and I can make my choices. So why would I then want to be, to represent a world that has less than that? I'm very happy that there are bands like uh, Pentagram and Men Who Pause and Advaita and um, Thermal and a Quarter and Shire and Funk and Soulmate and there are so many bands across the country. There are many bands today but the question is how many of them can actually make a global impression? In fact in the last five to six years uh, is where the real uh, emergence of the independent musician who's completely away from Bollywood is uh, coming to the forefront where um, uh, where uh, Indian Ocean has almost 200,000 fans on Facebook without ever running an advertisement or uh, without ever doing a campaign and it's pure people who are their fans. The 80s and 90s is when these people started but they are at the peak of their careers now. From endorsement deals to judges of reality shows, the concept of a rock star is forever changing. Concerts are planned better, marketing and merchandising are part of the game, it's slowly turning into a smart business. Indian movies, the great cultural harbingers of our time, are revitalizing the concept of the rock star. But does this mean that we'll have more film stars turn into rock stars? I'm hoping this would be, um, you know, music album India will be proud of. I'm working with a lot of international artists and producers. Um, I mean, it's too early to name them right now, but you all will know it as and when it happens. But um, more than any of that, I think, you know, we've never been able to foray as India into music, uh, except for Bollywood. And um, I think, you know, we have so much potential. We're such a musical country. We have so much potential. Um, you know, to be able to see artists from India flourishing globally is, is something that is my dream. Well, like we said, it is a dream for established stars and garage bands alike. Who among them will rock our world in the days to come and turn into India's global icons? Well, that's a space we'll be watching here on Aspire. But is there any Indian rock star or band that's become a truly global phenomenon? Well, that's really the essence of the story because what we're aiming for is to see an Indian rock star who becomes a global phenomenon. We hope that happens soon. All right, let's take a very quick break here on Aspire when we come back. Get your stuff customized and hand painted to make it your own. The Tag Oil Racer, the Android for the Elite. <laughs> 